Today and it wasn't bad, even if I say so myself. Uh, but short sticks are weird. Short sticks are weird. Mm. We should all get sticks. They're only ten pounds on the lip. I have a stick. Huh? Have a stick. Dan doesn't seem to have one. Oh, Dan. Oscar. Or Charlie. Charlie has a stick. I'm pretty confident of it. Thumbs up. Each. Me. Fun. She. Go. Look. Each. Hatch. Two. Two. One sword. Each. Me. Fun. Me. Tilting your arms inside. Feel all the blood, blood rush into your bottom hand. And then step around to the other side. And feel all the blood rush into the other hand. And back to the centre. Are your arms tired yet? Why not? Particularly. Could stand here for a bit longer. How do we feel? Iris? You ready to go for this for the rest? Of, we'll do, just do this for the rest of the session? Yeah. <laughs> I'm done. Yeah, we'll do all our key hold with our arms up to the side. I'm going to do the one that, this is the one that Iris did that was absolutely murder. To bring your leg up to the back, to the side, tap down, back, and up. So Iris, when we did this last time, did we do one leg five times and then the other leg five times? We did we swap legs each time? I think last time we did one leg 15 times and then the other leg 15 times. Okay. We're not going to do it 15 times, we'll do them 10 each. But we'll do 10 on one side and then swap sides. Each. Me. Um. She go look sit hat 
。え。十。はい、おすす。もうフローにいるはい。あざい。一。二。三、四、五、六、七、八。九、十。And sitting back on your, sitting back and stretching your arms up. Child's pose. And standing up. Use our circles. In. Hips in circles. Out the way. Feet together, same thing. Out the way. Put your foot in behind you, stretching the front of your thighs, and kicking back. There you go, other side. And kicking back. There you go, that side, hugging your knee in to your chest. Keep your hand on your knee, open your hips up. And stretching out the other side, hug your knee into your chest. Hands in, you open your hips up. And straighten me out. Not thinking of running plants. Uh, grab a drink of water in two seconds. I'll grab my phone. Because we're doing planks, duh. Why else could I say plank position? And I do it. Honestly, Dan, you don't do planks for three days and you already get. Your 
That'll do your hands, okay. Look inside. And reverse plank. And hollow hold. And you're out. That's it, yeah, and we'll do that for 30 <laughs> seconds. Okay, you can count. I do each, e, san, shi, go, ru, shi, hach, ki, ju, ni, ni, san, shi, go, ru, shi, hach, Q, Ju, Sun, Ni, 
Sam, Shi, Go, Rök, Shich, Haç, Q, Ju. Devam et de. That's good. Uh, let me think. Let's do some stretching. Let's finish off with some stretching. So let's stop, stand up and looking Hadari and Miggy. Stretching your neck out. Half turns. Just going through the, as much rotation as you feel comfortable. Right arm across the chest. Just stretching it at the front. Out. And then turn behind you. Swapping. And then turning behind you. Right arm over your shoulder. Release other side. Loosen up the shoulders front. Ichni san shi goruk si hudge and back. Ichni san shi goruk si hudge. Circles, so mosh there. Ichni san shi go on the other side, other way. Ichni san shi go. Knees together. So you're sort of trying to do the rotation thing again. So if you've got a hula hoop or something. And the other way, you should just loosen up your hips. Right leg forward, stretching the calf muscle on the left leg. Swapping so that your right leg is being stretched. Toes up, grab it if you can, or your ankle or your leg. Swap round. Stretch your right calf muscle. Oh my word, that hurts. And then your left, toes up. Grab them. Right leg, right leg behind. Me up, I'll give you 30 seconds to stretch. Anything we need to stretch, be stretch. Anything we've missed. I don't think Ophelia particularly understands how hot it is in London. That's all right. Right! Not it! Piano toss. Right! Not it! I'm kind of interested in that one. Don't wait. We can make you, we can draw that and ski.
Yes. Sin cookie. Kan ik ook wel slotten? Ja, maar. Moet jij dat? Kom, ik ga eens op je staan bij mij. Voilà. Met die wakkie. Voor het bouwen wakkie geef ik. En dan iets. 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 Dan. Iets. Hop. Hup. Iets. Dat. separate movements, they're one movement. So you're coming, blocking off the side and then rolling into it and there's this. Today's focus is going to be circles. So think about what circles your body is making as you're doing this, what circles you're drawing. We'll do 10 Ushuke by itself and 10 Ushuke Zuki. From the right side. Eight. Knee. Chi, go, go, chi, hat, ku, is, ni, tan, chi, go, go, chi, hat, ku. Yes. So, can I help you to do that one? Also, the same has to be mine. We stack. Let's just then stack it, and then rather than doing stand stuff here, which we've done a lot, instead we're going to do stack here, which is okay. So you're going to bounce down, up, and then you're going to meet with a final punch. Parting from the right. Just block the first ten. Eight. Knee. Sun. Chi. Go. Look. Sit. Hat. Ku. Ju. Eight. Knee. Sun. straight to our uke for the day. Today's uke is salt uke. From Kaiser Pijangamai. We're going to start single form, you're going to move weight across. Yaku salt uke. Just going to do, start with 10 just salt uke and then we'll do salt uke junzuki. So even when you're doing this single without the punch, the form is still going to be the same as if you were to punch. So we want the non-blocking shoulder to come forwards a little bit. Actually, we're going to do both. So we're going to do one, that, and then with a punch. And then later we're going to do another set of two. Uh, from Miggy. Eat. So the difference I want to 
we, before we move on, the difference I wanted to highlight, so there's different ways of doing sort of, one is turning your blocking shoulder forward and covering out. The other way is to turn, turn your block, blocking shoulder back, which is a bit, you're sort of doing a nutruka, but you're doing the same movement as you would for a nutruka, but your backhand's blocking. It's the same as when you can do, you can do a Jun Wauke, you can do a Gaku Wauke, you can do a Jun Sotoke, or a Gaku Sotoke. So from the top again, if we're going to turn Gaku Sotoke, so I want your non-blocking shoulder to come forward. So essentially I'm doing this, and I'm guiding it past my head, the same way you would with Uchi Uchiuke. It's less hard, you could argue. More of a guide. From Kaisoku. So from the top, first the block and then the block and the punch together. Eat. Eat. Set. Sheet. Look. Look. Sheet. Touch. Shoot. Shoot. Eat. So this, as I'm sure you noticed, is a slightly different take. Usually what we'll do when we're doing this technique is you'll have a block all the way out, which will be quite sort of a big kind of umph block, and from there you'll turn into your punch. This is my less, my, my cheap version, which is smaller, maybe Again, the moment we're talking about wanting to trim things down. So Martin Sensei does this quite a lot. And we're going to do this, we we'll get into our kicks in a bit, which is the main point of what I wanted to get to today. Um, utilizing these in your kicks. Because when I learned Soto Kazuki, Soto Kigeri, it was taught in two versions. It was taught with this big block, where you cover all the way out, and it was taught in this little one, where your shoulders remain on the line and you just guide it past. But actually we're going to stick to Zuki's. So that's where this idea comes from. I want you to try and use this with the same, the same Zuki. So we were just doing it, guiding it past you. Now we're going to do it bigger instead. Opening your shoulders up. And from here, rotating all the way through. Punching with the other hand. So just that. Each. comments any reflections what's how i'm finding it impossible to the idea of bringing my shoulder back um but my form is very much shoulder stay here move forward i think i don't think i'm telegraphing too much as he was saying before so the idea of locking here backwards in my opinion is really hard mm. however if you stand the line it makes it much easier so if you don't think, if you just think about it as small and big, mm. you get a small punch yeah. as opposed to big punch, but you're just going left and right rather mm -hmm. than back and forward, I can just that about make it. Really it was emphasised to me by my sensing when I taught it, when I learned, when I was first taught it, which is from Hidari to Dangamai. When you saw Tokugeri, there are two versions. I was told not to do something in the middle. You either do one or you do the other. And it's the exact same principle. You either, if someone's coming in for a punch, you're either going for a punch, yeah. You're either going to do the, do the big one, block, way out here. You've now turned your shoulders. Your shoulders are pointing in the direction that the attack's coming, coming from. So you're in a fist, though. 
um, because your shoulders are pointing that way, so should your hips be. And be because you're set up this way, a straight punch isn't going to work. So you're going to stop to carry because you've turned yourself sideways. You know, the one is much smaller, much faster. My sense is it's faster. Which is not turning your shoulders, keeping your shoulders on this line from stance, coming up, guiding this past your face, and then doing a junzuki. Oh no, a gakuzuki. A gakugeri, but a straight one. So a keri kami. Then, then what's this technique where you're doing sotuk and junjuki? That's not a technique. That's not a technique? No. Not that I know of. Uh, it's an allergism. Okay. Well, he loves it. But it's an allergism. Yeah, it's made up. It's great. This is great, but it's made up. It's probably adapted out of Uchi Age. Uchi Age, which is this. Probably a Sotoka version of that. Uh, so the thing to think about is what are your hips doing? If your hips remain in line, you're going to kick straight. If your hips are going, if are turning around, turning that way, you're then going. To, you're that you're now ready for a sock to get instead. So we'll do in your own time. Do five of the first one, five of one, five of the other one, and then come back and tell me which one you prefer. As you may. Which one do you prefer? Which one feels? Yeah. I think the second one. So we'll do it from the other side. In your own time. Five of each. How do you mean? definitely feel speed versus power. So I feel a lot stronger and I feel like I have a sturdier kick with the big one than for the little one. But the little one also feels significantly faster. The thing I've been thinking about with Buffy is that as the seasons progress and her fight skills, she's getting better but the demons are getting stronger. Uh, the way they show that is that she, they, she often has multiple attackers. And it's something I've thought about a lot in Kempo, which is that we, we fight one-on-one, -on -one, right? It's how we work through things, peer form. Um, but obviously in lockdown, we're doing it one, just us, pretending something's coming in. So today we're going to pretend that we've got a couple of attackers. So then what I did was I kind of searched the internet, and it said the first thing that we should do is to think about the flinch, okay? So if you're in cash and somebody's about to whack you, you wanna come into stance. So let's start there. Um, someone's about to whack you. Which direction? <laughs> Sorry? From which direction? Is it in front or behind? Uh, I haven't specified and I'm not going to. Okay. So someone's about to um, attack you. And I want you to go into stance on the command. Yoi! Sweet. Cash. Yoi! 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 
Fecha. Ia! Fecha. Sounds good? Now you can see lots of different movements. So you're thinking about people behind you and people in front of you, which is great. Uh, let's start that someone is um, coming straight towards you and they're coming down the center line. It doesn't really matter if they're punching here or kicking here or reversing, kicking you in the face. You want to go off the line of attack really dramatically. So the way we do this in Kempo is that from Kesh, we ask you to come off the line completely and then back onto the line of attack as so and into a stance, into a stance. I don't really care what stance you do today, that isn't really the point. So, let's try that. Something's coming towards you, mind your space and to the command, come off the line of attack. It! Cash. Me! Right, so look at yourself in, the, in your picture and line yourself up to something that you can see behind you. So in Aidan's case, it's the edge of his door. Maybe you're at the window. Cool. Now, watch yourself and see if you, you can see whatever's behind you. Sam! She! Go! if someone attacks him from behind okay it's very hard to know what would happen if someone just came up and whacked you behind happens all the time in Buffy um So in this case, I'm going to turn my shoulders out a bit to protect my little baby. So I'm going to turn out so that she's safe as I've dropped. And then I'm coming underneath, through and underneath. I'm going to take, take her. Take her. Hold tight. After this, you're also going to be pretty stable. Try not to jump around or shake too much. You're going to upset her. So this is called... Cushion, yeah. Uh, we'll do just five because I think it'll upset her if I do too many. Eat. It's much earlier for the kick. Was the well, kick big at what state would you do? Probably when you're even weight between your two legs. That's when you launch, I think. So that's interesting. What I would say 
Well, the way I think I learned it is for your for the Zuki version, the time you're generating the most force to punch through, through is when you're moving across. So actually, I would punch now and at this point of weight shift. And so I positioned myself. I mean, the other difference between Kushinzuki and Kushinari is your distance, how far away from your opponent you are. But from here, I am close enough that as I come across, I can punch. For the Gary, can't punch when I'm here, I've still got my weight on this leg. So now I'm punching just, just a, a tad later and countering as my head is coming back up. So if my head is drawing this circle, it punches at this stage, it kicks at this stage. As, I'm about, as, as my, my head starts to rise again. And so it kicks with this upward, move, with this upward movement. So it starts slightly later from, at least mine starts slightly later from my, my punch order. We'll do another five from the same side. Hidari, puppy good mine. Is it Gary Gamai or is it? What it's actually Kuno I think. Or Chiji Gamai. Yeah, probably Chiji Gamai. Or Puppy Gamai. Good choice, which one you prefer to do. Don't do Puppy Gamai in your grading. They probably won't get any points for that. Exactly. Unless we get the grading. So they count. It. Ni. us which is to come down smoothly so my preference is definitely to bounce into this because you know you're randori and then you go down punch them in something that hurts and come back up again the other thing to think about is this attacker is in front of you not to the side not coming through they're not the assumption is that you they're super close and that you've dropped in front of them in order to get out of something that's up head height, right? So then when you're kicking, don't kick sideways off, as it looks like at the moment. If you can't go high, like if you can't go for Sagets, which is kind of the official target, I believe, yeah. then you're more than welcome, especially in my class, to go for Kentucky. But if you're going for Kentucky, and I've been say I think I've been saying this for a few days now. Make it Kentucky. So so make sure that I know it's Kentucky by looking at it. So if it's going for to get, I want to see the heel on the camera. You're going for you're going for Kentucky. I want to see that flick come back in a smooth circle. After several months of doing this on a video. That's kind of what I'm looking out for. I didn't expect them to hug me recently. Uh, I still do what I've done for 15, 20, 40 years, which is I, I tensed up. Okay? So you can think about what happens when you tense up. If you're going to tense up, 
I, my tensing is my shoulders go up high. It, could you use that to do something with it? Like that, you know, very Krav Maga. Uh, let's do a few more and go into all of those options. So from Miggy, two down to one. Just a few more flinching, reacting to things, pretending someone's grabbing you. This time, worry about grabbing your all of your arm, front arm. Itch. Knee. Sand. Sheep. Go. Rook. It's looking really good. Haraksa Gary, too. Miggy, too dang. My pick. And again, let's try this again. Make sure both sides are up evenly matched. Itch. Knee. Bam. G. Go. Looks good. Clash. Don't be frightened to thump them one. They've just tried to grab you. And if this is like the ultimate time they've tried to grab you, don't be frightened about punching them as you're flinching a response. But make sure you have enough control that you, if they're grabbing you in an affectionate way, you don't punch them out. Okay? Might be good. Right, where are we? We're at 30. Um, let's build this up a little bit. Um, uh, hurrah! From Miggy, Midabi Gamai, Kamaite. So, Han Getsu Gabi. Your, your hands are crossed. You come up to grab a punch. You bring it to your waist. You kick them and you're back. You do something really fancy after that, but for the purposes of this exercise, that's enough. Another 20. Itch. Knee. Sand. She. Go. Rook. See. Punch. Q. Shoot. Itch. Knee. San. She. Go. R. Sish. Hutch. You. You. Eric Gary to Miggy. Midali Gamai Kamaite. Um. As you come up. Think of it as your fingers doing the work, not your uh, whatever this soft bit is. So, but not uh, the kamade. I don't know what that is. Um, boshi Q. Just don't don't think of it as this soft bit of your hand. Think of it as the fingers fingers doing your work. It's not, but for the purposes of single pull. Also, when you're here, think about what this hand is doing. Uh, my preferred form is to take it here, ready to smash it in the head for and get to Suki, which is called something completely different, isn't it? But, Kai Shinzuki. Kai Shinzuki. But, uh, for the purposes of this, have it ready. Ready more. Kai Shin Gary. No? Yes. It. Knee. San. She. Go. Rook. Seach. Hudge. Q. Ju. Ten more. Knee. San. She. Go. Rook. Seach. Hudge. 
Kiju. Geshen Kuki. Looking really good for a second down technique. The first one we teach. Is it that one? Um, yes, it's called Steep and Hitch. Um, Hidari, Hitchi Jigo, I think. And what we're just doing here is a, a hint as to what we're about to do. You start with one, okay? Then you're going to do Shidari. Then you're going to copy them. And then you're going to keep them back. Uh, the thing that uh, confuses a lot of people, the thing you have to look for, is timing. So it's never one, two, three. Instead, they expect the kick to be quite fast. It's a bit of an odd tempo where you get one, two and a half. Or one, two. Uh, so we'll try this a few times. Uh, try and, and just... When you're doing this the first time, timing is obviously really difficult. Just try and get your balance right so that you're balanced enough for the kick and try and, and set up as early as you can. Uh, the blocking, up and across, in your dancing, in your dancer style, in kick. when I do this. It was hammered into me from a very early stage that body movement is very important and I am one of the people who overdo body movement a lot. But to not be there more than others maybe. So one of the things you have to practice when I did it is when I first learned it is to do it without hands. Hands behind your back, get your head out of the way and by doing this you're also opening your foot up like we usually do for our kick. And then for the second one, they're attacking your body, which we are covering, but get your hip out of the way as well. And I've seen some different versions. You see some turn the hip. So this will straighten out again, which also helps with this. But I've also seen some people just sort of tuck it and keep it aligned sideways. What happens when you do this is your, your kick is now like way wide like this, rather than a bit straighter, which is more comfortable for some people. So you're almost into like marshy gary kind of ballet dancer kick. We were talking about that the other week, weren't we? If you can work here, Gary, uh, with your toe pointing the other way, then you can also probably make this work. So try Experiment with that a bit in your own time. You've got um, one thing to think about getting your body movement, getting your head out of the way. Also, when you're getting your hip out of the way, do you prefer it straight? Do you prefer it twisting, which is the more sort of, I think, the more commonly taught version? What, what works for you? How do you feel it's easiest to kick? I tend to do it um, on more of a sideways angle. But I still keep that kind of spring from the shadow. That's a lot of information. Try it out a few times in your own time. Do it five times. Do each thing five times. Each version. I do it. You can your hands after you've done it without your hands. Feels 
Flipping around, we trying it on the other side as well. Yeah, any reflections, questions? Oops. <laughs> Um, so I can't do the I can't do the back and back because I can do it. I just can't land afterwards. So I do back 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 land. I need to go into something because that's quite aggressive. If I do uh, back forward back, I have a lot more control over my kicking leg. So that makes a huge difference on which one to choose when. Yeah, I also can't. This particular one, I don't have a preferred form. I think I also tend to adapt it on how much I have to move and what I'm doing afterwards, right? Whether you're continuing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so the final step of this. We've done cushion cushion zuki, we've done cushion gear. Put them together. Iris, can you guess what the technique is called? Cushion zuki gay. Correct. Cushion zuki gay. AKA and pineapple apple pen. Why is that? Why is it also known as the pineapple apple pen? True. 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 Uh, from Hidari Chijigamai, come on, okay. Copy your mind, if you so please. Uh, so now we're going to do the exact same thing. Distance for this is going to be pretty important. And this is also where your timings come in. Because you remember how we're talking about you're going to punch when you come across, you're going to kick when you're rising. I want to see that when you're doing, it, when you're doing this movement. So punch on the across, kick on the up. If you sit, if you stand there, I will kick you. Uh, to the cat. Each. Deep. Sup. Chi. Oh. Relax, ready? One thing I've noticed as well for taller men is they step. One thing I've really noticed, they kind of come down across, they come in, they kind of slide forwards. Certainly that's what I see now they do. I don't need that. A little bit of a slide forward. When you drop, as you come across, then you slide. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes it's really interesting in this to get some momentum, but... Zuki Gary, the fact that you have to it's rare that you're in a position where you can both punch and kick someone. Yeah. yeah. So uh, if my target my opponent is here and I'm here. I get into target, punch them, and then I sort of move outwards just enough that I will so I'm sort of moving in a diagonal past them. Like so that I gain that distance that I need to punch and then lose it. So that I can kick mm -hmm. coming in and out. Uh, one other thought for you, Ophelia, is that we were doing this on grass yesterday, and it turns out sliding on grass completely different to sliding on my unwashed floors. Uh huh. Maybe I'm setting me at the moment; they're a bit sticky. Yeah. So just a thought of for like, what do we do with sliding on rough material? But what do we do with cushions? 
on rough, rougher material, rougher surfaces. Mm, good question. Um, yeah, good question. Um, uh, Hold on to that thought, we'll come back to it. Uh, should we just do that again? Oh, 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 oh. Quiet. Uh, uh, at Sun Run Hancock? Yes, we're running Hancock. Full tilt. Uh, this is your grading. Your black belt is hanging on the balance because this is not a black belt sequence, right? So this is, it's now or never arrows. This is where you're getting in. From Idari, Ichijigama, come on, come on. Hey! Ich. Yeah, 
you if someone wants to fight you, so don't, don't mess with me. But that's not actually what we're doing. We're trying to keep your hands in until right as you're going to use them. Uh, and again, keep, keep trying to work on this hip movement. It looks like there's not that much hip strength coming into it. it looks like it's more arms. Could be just the angle of the cameras. In the back, we can't actually see what other groups are doing. Uh, from Miggy side, let me again. Each. Knee. Sun. Ji. Oh. I don't know if you can see this in the, in the, in the recording, but I can definitely feel it when I'm doing it because I can feel like it's slammed to one side and it's slammed to the other. I did this one, which is making my arm solid. So you're doing it, you're hitting your, drastically putting your hip backwards and then pushing it forward. And that's what feels like. Everything's on like a rubber band connected to that. What was that? I don't know. Cool? Look. That's Yes. Good, that looks so much better. That's a great intro. <laughs> uh, should we do Skeeter Nitch again, implementing what we just did? Taking it back to Skeeter Nitch again? Um, so it's the same movement and it's the same idea that on one hand, two things to think about whether you want to turn your hip straight, you want to tuck them in, and what works with this hip movement that you're going to put in. How much can you turn? How much do you have to turn to get that propulsion in? From Hidari, Chijiwai, how, no, I still got No, Chijiwai. I made it on my piece, Chijiwai. You can just keep in it here. So, Wake, Shdanke, Each. Hard. I confused myself there. Uh, from Miggy, there's not a lot of hip movement to do in one movement. I definitely don't think, don't do all of that when I do ski uh, We'll try it again from Miggy. Eight. Think about that. Understandable. It's hard to do the hips and the feet. Mm -hmm. So we've concentrated on feet for, for months and months now, and it's really hard to do both together. We uh, from Idari Ichijigama. Oh, okay. Um, do you remember what the name of the defense for what we just did is? Do you remember what it's called? What was the name? Skitenni. Skitenni, good. Do you remember Skitenni? Were we doing that yesterday? One, two. This time, because they're both to the head. You're going to do Uchiyagi, which we also did the other day. But then you're going to come straight in, blocking across with the same hand. The same hand is going to block twice. 
So this is, uh, it's going straight up instead of by your side. I learned it is going straight up. And then straight across. Uh, I, I think I think I think uh, Alid might do it slightly differently, but but I I also learned it as up across. So we'll do a couple. See how it goes. Do the count. Just the block. So blocking up and then across. Each. So what you'll notice, there's an interesting body movement going on here because you're going to have to kick with your front. There's a lot of counterintuitive body weight movement. The first thing, obviously, you're blocking up with your head, you're going to have to go back, get out of the way. But after that, so the attack is coming this side, you're blocking sideways. You're going to need your head to go the other way as well. So from here, with your block coming, you want your head to go the other direction of wherever your block is going. This is going up, your head's going back. This is going, your block's going to come this way, your head's going to want to go the other way. But what you run the risk of, from here, you shift too much out to this side, or your weight is on this leg, you can't kick. You have to kick with that leg. Where did your hand stop? Huh? Does your hand stop? Does my hand stop where? Start. Where does it start? Yeah. Where does the block start? Does it start in Gedangamai? Uh, Gedangamai. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I think it's like... Okay. So it pretty much starts at starts. This comes up. And then I think leading with your elbow. So your elbow leads up, and then your elbow leads across. Your elbow is drawing a line like that. Your head's going to come back, and then a little bit forward, but still enough that you can shift your balance onto this leg. Thank you. So it should look. Yeah. Oh. Should look something like this. Okay. We'll try it. And we'll see how it goes. From, we'll start over from one again. Get the kick. Eat. Eat. Down. Before you move on to the other side? Pretending, right? Pretending, yes. Says it's Sotto Gary. Oh. oh no, I've got it wrong. Put it in you. Yeah. Cool, got it. Yeah, my sound is terrible, sorry. Uh, from the other side, from Miggy. Again, so weight comes back, locking upwards, and then leave with your elbow cross. Thank you. Each. Each. Back. Each. Go. Think of what 
this first block is doing, not just coming up. Uh, I know a cookie just really likes to keep our eyes level, but generally my preferred form is that you drop down a little bit, map it a little bit. So I want you to shrink away from it a little bit and then come back, bring your back weight back a little bit more centre for the second time. So I think of actually going back and then back up, going onto your back leg and then sort of back into the middle again before you get ready for the kick. Because you have to be in the middle a little bit for this, for me. But make sure you get the sorami in there as well, so this head back movement. Uh, from Hidari's side again. Same thing. Eight. Eight. Up. Eight. Up. Eight. Up. Eight. Much better. Let's get it. Just Any comments before you? No? Anything on the side? Each. Now I need to shuffle again. This time we're going to do the technique that we Sensei just mentioned. Root and knee. So the attack for this, come in, cross the Furuzuki to draw that, followed by Furuzuki this time to tune up. So you think after you've hit them once, they've kind of doubled over a little bit. And you go, ha, here's my moment. And then you Furuzuki them in. With this time, so this time it comes, I always think of it as a bit of a diagonal rather than a straight out. They are, if, if they're bent over a little bit, to go straight in, you would have to come at this angle. Come through. Yes. I have a comment on this. Yes? It's the tennis technique. Oh yes, yes, you're right, it is. It's definitely like a tennis, a forehand, like, that's exactly what you're doing, yeah. So, two count. Eight. Knee. Back. Chi. Ko. Ok. Oh. Oh. 
And the defense for this is also with the same hand both sides. But this time, since you're attacking them from the side, your blocks also have to go out to the sides. From Hidari to Jigamai. First thing you're going to do, then you're going to be in Hidari to Mai. So the first attack is going to come around this way. You're going to block straight up. I'll show you we've done this before. Follow, following this, the next attack is coming through this way. You're going to this time block the other way. So I'm a bit lower, remember they go through the midriff. You're covering, and as you're doing this, your hips, your knees are coming back. We're going to do a softer carry. You know, my prep for softer carry is always turn your knee away from them, so that you get you get your leg from here, leg up ready, softer carry, and down. So we do that a couple of times slowly. Reach, back on the side, cross your body. And soft again. Knee. And. Knee. Oh. Knee back to the same thing from the other side out and then across. Look. That's two. Uh, okay. Grab a drink of water, give me two seconds. If, so the ideal form of this is Dr. Gary, so it's going to the attacker's ribs or maybe even the head if they're really like this. I don't know what they come. What have they done? You've taken them out here, you've taken them out here. They're probably quite upright in front of you, so that's why you're pulling this back and they're sort of here. You need to push them back. So you have to go pretty high and you've pro probably got to get to get. If you're unlikely to get Saget, and most of us were not getting Saget, uh, I suggest that, or, or if you've got a reason, like my hip, that you can't get Saget, can I suggest that you try two or three at Saget to show that you know that that's what you should be getting, and then go for the knee, or go for a point that you're aware of on the leg. But at the moment, you're sort of in this range, most of you, um, and that's not going to help you in the slightest. So um, I'm sure Ophelia can take over from here and tell you where to go, but there's lots of points on the leg. Yeah, so a good point to aim for, there's one, if you draw a spiral from the inside of your knee, to the outside of your hip, if you draw a line, it needs to be along there, you have points. So on the inside, just above your knee, and on the outside, just below your hip. These are both special points. You can draw the line across like that. That goes along your points. All very good places to hit, I'll give you a dead leg. From Hidari Ichi Jigamai. Right. So what we just do, we're blocking across, we're blocking out, and then across, and then soft again. <laughs> And target for as many as you can, and then choose. Always aim for a target. High or low, decide this is what I'm hitting, and hit that. Be intentional. Each. Me. Down. Me. 
Yeah. Uh, how many more minutes have we got? Yeah. Two more minutes. Should we do it again with Ran Henkel? Or does anyone have any questions? No questions? How do I remember the difference between the two? Furry Penny has furry Zuki. Ski Penny has ski. Ah, you said ski to me earlier. Yeah, the jaw, jaw, jaw is... Jojo jo, jo, ski to me. I misheard you then, I think. And from Hidari to Jigomai, we'll swap sides each time. Guys, now you're going to do them with one hand. Eight. Open sides. B. Seven. Go. Is anyone coming up with any creative brand handcuffs for this? Because I can't really think of anything other than your two marching. You can go for Ni or San Dan. You can actually go so you can do all the work with this hand. Bang, bang. Um, so I, I can do a Frizuki afterwards. It depends where I land my foot. Land classically hawkey back, I have to run away. Yeah. But if I land sort of more aggressively, so lowering my stance forward, pull this back, protect, kick, and land quite forward, that would be my self defense version of it, as opposed to hawkey, which if I did hawkey, I kind of Step that way, step this way, attack, and then gracefully walk away. She says. Okay, come on up. Where's your words? No. Kill the words. Right. That's the right one. Pop them in an email and send them to you. Uh, from Hidari to Yanamai. Come on. Yakuziki, 
Y la sede, estudiosa. Se mira. Pich. Ni. Sa. Si. O. Ok. Chich. Ach. Ki. Chi. So I want to try and find circles in all our techniques. And if you, you should be able to find circles in everything. Whatever you do, there should be circles somewhere. And so I'm thinking, some of these are a bit more obvious to me than others. Where do you guys find circles in what we just did, for example? I think uh, if we remember Sensei Danny's form of punching, it's, like, it's almost like throwing a yo-yo. That's where I see in the circle. Do you see an oval coming out and then coming back in again? Yeah. That's an, that's an interesting... <coughs> well, that, that definitely makes sense to me. What about you, Sensei? Any ideas? No, I don't... I don't... I don't think so. I think, for me, the circles are probably in that if I have to find one, it would be colder, so it's quite vague. About yeah. the location of the hips and where and how that's going through. But I don't, yeah, I'm not sure. For me, it's a, this is a, it's a different pr principle. Hazame, momentum. Yeah, yeah, the Hazame bounce, 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 and you should be able to just build that up. Yeah, that's definitely what I, that's the main principle I think of when we do the, just our main Zuki, the Zingo Zuki. It's more about So I was, I thought if anyone had any other perspectives, but I think we all seem to be on the same page. Aris, any ideas? No. No? Okay. Moving on then to the counter for this, which is Uchu Kazuki from Hidari Shijigamai from Mate. Now for this, I definitely see circles. So we'll do just, we'll do five of them, and then I'm going to think about where circles are appearing as you're doing with the key, and then we'll talk about it after five. After five on one side and the five on the other. No. Each. Ni. Da. Chi. Po. Did I say it? No. Iris, where do you find circles? Um, I'm not sure how to describe it. How would I describe a circle? It's like a half circle, actually, not a full one. Yeah, it depends. I can make it a full circle, I reckon. Dan, where do you, where do you find the circle? In the arc that your... Uh, that your Jun... There. Your, your elbow, your front elbow is tracing a half circle. Actually, it's full, but I only pay attention from where it's up to where it comes down. I'm, yeah. more, I'm more intrigued by Iris's inability to describe a circle. So I find, yeah, do you, Iris, do you get where Dan is coming from? Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, so the, I can, I figure I can draw a whole circle with it. And if it doesn't make sense when you first do it, think of Subami Gayash. Because here, you're definitely, you're drawing more than one circle. You're going like a circle and a half at least. You're coming in, and then we teach if you look at it from the side, this is a circle, which then comes through. Plus at least a circle and a half right there. And this is not that different. So from here, if you look at it from the front, it looks like I'm just doing that, and then coming back down again. But if you look at it from the side, what I'm actually doing is I'm bringing this up, guiding it past my face, and then bringing it back down again. 
that's now drawn a whole circle around the face. Does that make sense? Yeah. I was looking to, uh, for a way to draw it. So rather than doing what Dan suggested, which is you're looking at your elbow, look at the tip of your finger. You'll definitely see a circle then. If you start here, come that way. And then it's coming back. So we'll do, we'll do another 10 of these. Uh, keep, and keep the circle in mind. Try and draw this whole circle all the way around. Going past your face and then coming back. Can I just add one more thing? Absolutely. Cool. So we traditionally, for you Iris, would have done the following. And it's not wrong, this is definitely how I would. So you're coming in, one, and then coming out, two. Those are solid points. As you get up to sort of black belt and beyond, you're looking at, um, and we're looking at circles. This is your key to practice. How do we get from here to here as smoothly as possible? And so if you slow it down, you don't need to pass through that point. You need to pass through that point, but you don't have to hold that point. And that I think is what you will learn from thinking about it as a circle. So you're coming through, passing through that point, coming out as if it's a dance movement that's flowing. Um, yeah. See what that does to your technique. That's certainly what I found as soon as Sensei Ophelia said, let's do it as a circle, my form changed. It's definitely not, it's not a shortcut. It's not, it doesn't, um, it's not making it easier or harder as much as it's about changing the, you're, you're still getting to the same place. You're taking a slightly different route getting there. And you're, 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 stop, you're coming in, you're just not stopping. Like, you just, you pass that point and then you move straight on. Uh, so we'll start from Hidari Shijigawai. So what we were just talking about, Fushuke, Tugakuzuki, trying to get that circle in there with your block hand. Eight. Eight. Seven. Eight. Four. Four. Right side, and on the other side, same thing again. Each, e, down, e, four, drop, each, press, two. Did your technique feel very different this time around? Uh, kind of, yeah. I found when I first thought about it as, as a circle, mm -hmm. it was, I think I had this tendency to think about bringing this like out and then in like this. Yeah, it becomes less sort of the shape, I think, that you learn as a beginner is definitely more of a triangle. Yeah. yeah it's arm up, cross, down. And then eventually you learn to kind of soften those edges a little bit. Like there's no trimming off the fat, right? You sort of realize, actually, I don't need to be waiting around here. I can just go straight ahead. No, no I, th I think, I think, Ophelia, since, um, Iris's point is that you don't, when you're making a circle, when, you, when you're told traditionally to make a circle mm -hmm. and you're still a Q grade, you come out here mm -hmm. and come back in and come through, because that's quite a big circle, yeah. right? So it's interesting. And what I'm finding just more for higher grades is the circle is up, because you're keeping this quite tight, there's no point in coming out here, because the punch is here. So you want to be here, so you come in. But this is almost coming in 
this is not retracted when this has come out. And this is how you end up with some of those forms that we do. Like that in, in Kata. But I've not noticed that before. Uh, yours, Ophelia, hasn't even retracted from here. It's up here. Mine is about here by the time I deliver the punch. Yours is still up here. Um, I was going to do it a little We don't have a lot of time. And this was going to be video. We'll do it anyway. Uh, so from Hap Hidari. So what were you just doing? Start here. Or I can get Now is this Daki Danzuki by a chance? No, it can't be Dan. Dan would be two. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Danzuki, you blocking it much of the same hand. No, Danzuki is bang, bang. Okay, yeah. This is Stalke Zuki, no? So, what, what it is from here, we're doing Stalke, and then coming up the door again, and then back to Zuki. Um, we'll do five of them again. Look for circles. I'm going to be looking for circles and I'll get back to you in about 20 seconds when we've done them. Please. Momentum and circles. So it's not in one sense, the movement that we were just doing, the shoulders that my the shoulder movement that I'm doing to get those circles are still happening. Um, and what I'm doing with my block, especially, is the block is bouncing off. So I'm not blocking and then completely using all my muscles to change the direction. I'm actually using whatever momentum momentum I have, which we about at the last earlier this week, momentum. So I'm using the momentum of that impact, that block, that bounce, to fuel my other attack, to fuel my first attack. But I can also see a circle going on here. The circle with the bounce. Because then from here, I attack and I come back here. Did anyone do rhythmic, rhythmic gymnastics as a kid? No? So if you think about it, and you had, if you had a ribbon in your hand at this point, and you went down and flicked it up, that ribbon would make a full circle through. Um, and it's really interesting asking us to do this exercise because it kind of goes, it's like some kind of dunk movement. Definitely the knuckles sort of do a quarter circle from when the blocking downwards to the uh, bridge of the nose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a little bit that. I find this interesting because normally we don't look at that many circles except for subtle. We don't mm -hmm. look at circles within hard techniques. It tends to be all in the soft techniques. That's why I thought it was fun. I think it's fun. Uh, shall we go from Miggy this time? Sleeping, thinking about the circles that we were just talking about. So now that we've discussed it once, you have an idea of where these circles could happen. But also see if they happen anywhere else. Me? 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 Yes. Do you feel the circles in your 
back to what Kirita was saying about the uh, rhythmic dancing. And I can now see ribbons flowing all around me as I do this. <gasps> that should be our next TikTok. Kempo with ribbons, yes. Oh, well, the, one of my uh, sparring partners used to do it with flags. Anyway, enough. Young ones. Brett! Got it. Daddy! Chew down the mic to my team. Okay. Uh, ten. Uh, Budokan? To Nichi Getsu. I think I've got that right. Best, uh, Yaku. Itch. Me. Sad. Excellent. So, Odokan, you are coming in like a mute and you're just flicking, like so. Um, you are trying to get them on their bindi point or their third eye, uh, whatever it is that you would call this center. So that is Nichigetsu as a pressure point. It kind of doesn't do much, I don't think. Anyone, does it hurt anyone else? I mean, I think of it more as the bridge of the nose, which would hurt more. Yeah, so you're absolutely right. Sensei Sean would go even more into the nose than that. Um, but so you may be right that it's more Sankaku rather than Nichigetsu. But whatever you're doing, if you really want it to hurt, bring that knuckle out and really get them. But the key here is to keep it very loose. That was super weird. Ophelia jumped back like magic. Right, okay. Uh, so that was San. So let's start from the beginning from Harari. Chuyudangamai. Gyaku. Suruken. Itch. Ni. San. Shi. Go. Rook. Siege. Hudge. Q. Ju. Heratsugari 2, Miggy. We're doing the bike for my take. Let's try that one more time. Any questions? Right. To the count. Itch. Knee. San. Chi. Go. Rook. Sish. Hud. Q. Ju. Aspelia San, you're using your hips so much more in Sweden. This is awesome. For the rest of you, you really do want to be using your hara to really get all of this. This is not a big block, right? And I use Miyuch. You want to be like really using your hara to push into, push all your weight into this attack. Um, Ophelia San, what would you add to this to make it a multi attack? I'm finished with this. Yeah, you've come in. Okay. Right. What I would do. You do this, this, sorry? Okay, or a hen. Okay, let's do that. Let's do five. Uraken, wait, Gyaku Uraken Junzuki to chew down or to the ribs. Junzuki. Okay, from Hidari, chew down the mic, to my day, to the count. Why are you in Chiji Gamai? Itch. Knee. No, I've gone for chew down. Do No. What I can? Yeah. Yeah. San. She. Go. Haraksagari to Miggy. And again, same thing. Itch. Knee. San. She. Go. Cash and Q. 
Uh, Iris, you can afford to make your um, your form a lot tighter. So you can, again, we're looking up at you, so it's difficult to judge, but I feel like your shoulders and your elbows are too far out. And Dan, reverse comment. Feels like it's too close to me. So I feel like you could be larger. So if you could just swap your form, that would be great. Whatever this t-shirt is, this is what you should train in at all times, Peter. It looks great. There's something about the way you're forming. No, I can't. Or maybe you've been practicing on the on the beach or something. It's looking pretty good. Um, what should we add, Dan? We've gone in for an irritant, gone in for a strike. Where do you go from here? No question, Dutch can take you, Gary. <laughs> so bring your back foot back and then Kentucky Jun yeah, Sounds sure. good. Let's try it. Do the count from Hidari Churangamai. We're still in attacking mode. Itch. Back fist to the head. Punch. Jun. Kentucky. Knee. Quite hard. San. She. Go. Rook. Seat. Punch. Cash and cookie. Yeah, I found that quite hard. I don't think I would add a gin. Gin from there. But we will balance it and go to the other side. I may have found it hard because my ankles don't like it. And do the count. Itch. Knee. Sand. She. Go. Any questions? Any corrections? No? Grab some water. Aiden, favorite technique? Favorite, uh, uh, what kind of technique? Um, your favorite hard technique. Actually, I don't care. Your favorite technique. Oh, um, I mean, the one, the one I, always, I always really like is, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Ude, Ude Juji. Ude Juji? But, Okay, hold on to that. Well, we'll, think, that as, we'll do that as a second one. Um, uh, hard technique, though. Um, that's okay. Hold on to that. Okay. Iris, okay. What's your favorite technique? Who are you asking? Iris. I don't think I have a favorite technique. <laughs> Name a technique. Uh, okay. Let's let's choose one for you then for Uday Juju. So attacker number one is coming in with a punch to the head. Okay. We will be here, we'll do Uche Uke Zuki and punch them. Okay. And then what we need to do is attackers two is going to be here and looking a little bit shocked. Okay. So we want to come across, take them from underneath, Miyuchi them and go then into Uday Juji. Okay? and then finish off the technique however you know how to finish it. So if you've got enough space, attacker one, punch to the head. Attacker two is stunned with your amazing martial arts. It's just standing there. Let's try that. From Migi, Chichi Gama. Itch, Ocheo Keizuki. Turn round, attack, arrest the guy or the woman. Or the demon, or the vampire. Let's not be too forgiving. Mm, okay, and um, four more. Me. Okay. 
Primo. San. Looking good. Chi. Chi. Go. Excellent. Who is dropping the second assailant to the ground? Anyone? No? Yes, you are? Uh, why is that a bad idea, Dan? Because you're turning around to do something on the ground. You don't know what number one is doing. Exactly. Exactly. So, excellent answer. So, what we're going to do is I want you to do the next five... So you've done Uche and Shekizuki and, and they've taken a step back because your punch is so powerful. You've taken the assailant, muted them, and got them into a lock. It's really important to put that human or that assailant in front of your first attacker. Okay? Does that make sense? And that means that the person who's attacking you is going to have to attack through their friend to attack you. Okay? So really think about that as you do the next five from Miggy. She don't know my take. It! Oh, Back to stance. Knee! And again. Last one, make it awesome. Go! So, then what happens is that they are in that stance in front of you, right? And their pers the person behind them is attacking you. Now you can drop them to the ground, as, as Dan was thinking about earlier, but that's going to give you the other person could just jump off them. Um, if this was Muay Thai, you'd end, or MMA, you'd end up in some kind of clinch situation. But you want a technique, really, whereby you can take the, this person out in front of you and use them as a self-defense weapon, somehow. But this is Kempo, so taking them out is a really tricky thing, because we, we don't teach you how to do, like, break their arm at this point so that they're stood there with no arm and wandering around. Again, Krav Maga might do that. I don't know. I've never been. Um, any thoughts? Any questions? No? Um, um, I have a question, sort of. Um, say we were doing something like this and attacker number one was able to uh, outflank us well, we were doing the Ude Juji. Is there, uh, would the counter well doing that just be a kick, or would the response be just to let the other person go and get away? You've got a couple of options. Um, my favorite is not, is to remember, so the, the video I was watching was really interesting. It said, you know, remember that Bruce Lee often runs away in his movies. And actually, Buffy often runs away too. Like, you know, you don't need to fight every assailant. The first thing is to be safe in that situation. Give them the wallet, you know, let someone else deal with it. Um, so if you're going to run from this situation, you might, and you think they're going to, they are strong, you know, if they're struggling and it looks like they're going to get out. Um, in a Randori situation, what I would normally do is push them out and get rid of them, ideally into the second, first assailant. That's where your imagination, you know, you're thinking about it. Um, I think, I think there are other stronger techniques to take you down, and that's where I was going to go to next. 
I think, I, and it's unfair because I did not tell you what we were doing. I think if someone was standing here going, oh my God, you're attacking my mate, I probably would do an Akuri Gote and put them in front of me, you know, in front of the assailant. So that is probably what I would do in that situation. A, I'm better at Akuri Gote than Juji Gote. Um, Juji, what was that? Juji Gote? Good at Juji. Good day, Gigi. See, I don't even know the name. Um, let's think about where, let's finish up with two attacks. So, um, Dan, we'll, we'll continue with an attack to the head coming forward. What's this person on the side good at? Do you want me to give the attack for the number one or number two? Number two. So number one has just given a head. Yep. Number to say furi ten ni, furi furi. Cool. So let's make our lives simple. Um, the uh, the woman in the front is going to smash us in the head just once. They're the weaker. They're the weaker person. They're the weaker of the two. That's what we've established. Because the second one is going to do two frizukis. Is that right? Is that what you're asking for? So. Um, so I think what we'll do is we'll do an Ichio take Zuki, they step back while you're in this position, they attack, so you either block, soft block, hard block, hard block, down, and do something, okay? And do a counter. Uh, I would kick, but I'm interested to see what you guys do. So imagination is, person in front is punching you to the head, Person to the side is a roundhouse punch to the head, two of them, front and back. From Migi, Shuji Gamai, Kawaito. Itch! Uchea Kizuki. Side punch comes up, block, block, kick. Make sure you're not in the middle of your two assailants. Back to stops. Knee. Block, block. Kick. Move. And again. Span. She. Any questions? No? I've got a couple of thoughts, which is I think you should move between attacks to make sure that you're getting away from the first person. Um, I also think... Um, it also makes me think about something my sensei a long time ago said when he was doing randori. He doesn't think about techniques. What he does is he feels it, that very Zen thing of like holding people off, flinching. And then as soon as he feels that someone's made contact or they repeatedly make a point contact, that's when he feels it and takes them down. Does that make sense? And so, so they're not letting the... When they responding to an attacker when they're giving time in contact to to you yeah he's sort of feeling it out and when he feels like and he's well he and the way he described it was when it touches his sleeve and you can feel it on his dogi that's when he reacts to whatever that is but until then he doesn't go into that situation thinking about which technique he's going to use any other questions yeah it is 40. Okay, um, start thinking about what's your least favorite techniques. Again, same theme, what techniques make you mad? What make you irritated because they're difficult? Uh, what make you angry? Um, or what do you use when you're angry? So let's start with the one that irritates me quite a lot, or used to, doesn't anymore. From Miggy, 
Chichi Kamai Kamaite. Gonna do the attack for Skeet and Each. So, jaw two, give the count. Itch. Ni. San. Chi. Go. Rook. Seesh. Hud. Chi. Chi. Okay, defense on Skeet and Each. So, cover, block, while you're there, kick. Okay, skeet and each. Itch. Knees. Sun. Sheep. Go. Rook. Seach. Hudge. Shoot. Shoot. Cash, any questions? No? Any guesses why it irritates me? Something. Huh? You have to get your balance right. Not being able to do it in time? Uh, yeah, I think, um, so say a previous at timing, and then you said not doing it in time, that's true. I also think it looks a bit silly. It's the least likely thing I'm going to use in a fight. Right? Like it just feels a bit impractical. Uh, how did I make my peace with it? By calling it into and dancing. I spend all my time thinking about balance and looking beautiful. And then suddenly I made peace with this technique. But for the longest time I was like, what is the point of this technique? Uh, any questions about form? No? Let's just do the other side to keep warm then. From Hidari, Chidi goodbye, goodbye Tay. Actually, Chidang goodbye. Let's do the attack first. Itch. Ni. San. Chi. Go. Rook. Sish. Hodge. Q. Zhu. And the defense. Itch. Ni. Zan. Okay, let's slow it down. So for she, I'll walk you through it. She, you turn your back foot back and you block upwards. Wake. And then you bring your front hip in and you cover across and then you kick excellent ideally in my form you kick while your hands are in place okay she which needs sound cheap go cover block kick which needs sound cheap go brook beach Hudge. You. You. Action for Q. And then if you have time, there's quite a few skeeter leeches on the members area. Sensei Ophelia does a very good description of it. Um, Um, the technical principles. Creep. Probably, yes. Is that what it was called? Is, is that what it's now called? If you 144, could check. 44, yeah. 144. What's interesting, and, and do you remember any of them, Ophelia? Kimiaku, lever, momentum, wheel. Balance. Balance. Kagate. So, Kagate. So, so yeah, so Kegito is the one you missed. Uh, balance is part of um, Keiko no Ri, which is changing a small force into a large force. And I'll give you an example from Book of Hokkaido. 
For example, when moving a heavy stone by inserting a rod under the stone and making a fulcrum just behind where the rod touches the stone, the point of action. A small force applied to the opposite end, the point of application, can raise the stone. This is called tekonori. So, yeah, we're going to talk about circles. That's what we were talking about today. That's what the topic I decided to pick about. The, one of the things I thought about, I thought we were going to, I originally was thinking of doing Schnaukigo. Last minute decided that was boring. And the reason I think we were talking about how mostly we use circles in Juho, but that they're quite prominent in Goho as well. And I think the place that I, the Goho that I see the, mo the most in is, is kicks. Uh, because it's this act of pulling your leg in, putting your foot in, and then sending it out and then putting it back down again. It forms this sort of circle movement. Which is especially, so Kinteki obviously does that. In Kinteki, I think of this as circled the other way. Which I think is also the difference. So usually you'll come up, kick, and then come down. Kinteki comes from underneath. No, but that's a conversation for a different day. But that's a thought I had as we were doing this class. Is it's very obvious in in our nookies and in techniques like gakugote and um, okurugote, where the circles lie. But actually, the circles are everywhere. In everything we do, there's a circle. There's a circle. There's a circle moving your hips, moving your shoulders. Your head is maybe moving in a circle. It's usually either, it's everything you do is usually a mix of all these principles that we're, talk, that we're going to be talking about for the coming week and that we have been talking about in the last class as well. So every, almost every single movement, I reckon every single movement you make in Kempo can be tied back to at least one of these principles. And I think this is this one and momentum. I think are the are two of the most personally the most prominent ones. When in terms of the, the ones that I see the most in my the ones I find myself working working for the most, especially now that we're in lockdown, the ones I find myself thinking about the most is how to get how to get that momentum, how to get snappy as possible, how to get as much strength with with as little muscle. Because I don't have much of that. I don't know if you guys notice. <laughs> but equally, also, I think both of these are quite relevant. Momentum and also the circle movements making, um, making effect, I, I think of them as making effective use of strength. So if you try and change direction midway, if you move something that way and then, and then decide midway is going to stop and it's going to stop moving that way, you'll lose momentum in that turn. But if you, if you make it an arch, then you can maintain some of that momentum as you move which is something I think about a lot in, in how I move and always try to not turn, not make very sudden change. O often I'll try and move in these arches rather than these right angles or lines. Any thoughts? Has anyone else reflected on this as well? It's just me being very nerdy. If you're going to be nerdy, I'd like to add to your nerdiness as you go through that journey. So as you investigate, have a think about how that affects footwork and gamais, because I think there's a lot of circles um, in what we do there. Um, and I think I get confused when those circles no longer exist because they've been adapted for some reason. So that's, that's worth thinking about. Uh, I particularly like it when circles are added back into techniques. So, for example, you stick Neogamai and Arusugeri, which to me is newfangled, nouveau, and that suddenly gives you more circles. Um, the other thing to think about is how it starts affecting the way we look at our own sim symbolism. So, obviously, uh, we're thinking about how do you animate our own logo, our personal logo yeah. for the club. There's definite circles in that. Um, because it's a flower, it is brown, um, and I don't, I don't, I don't think these things have come out without um, uh, what's the word? 
I don't think I don't think these are random things that are brought brought together. I think there's a real reason that sort of the original sort of weaponry of the white lotus. So if you go back to Vedics, is like killing discus. Um, and then you're into lotuses, and then you're into the fact that we use the lotus to symbolise all sorts of things, from um, katas to logos, and that gets. And then you're into yin and yang. So really nerdy be really good to connect the dots on all of that. We'll ponder that Excellent. and come back in about six months with the answer. Perfect. As long as we're not still in lockdown, that would be great. Yeah. I'll stop that sentence. Uh, how many of you have Googled uh, or searched for the token in other languages or said it in other languages? I once worked, uh, I once went with a sensei when I was a brown belt in Mumbai uh, to a, to a orphanage and we definitely did a Hindi Hindiized version of it but they were kids so it was really simple it was much more like do good do good um, in Hombu I've definitely sat through what looks like there is those things on television you know when you put the movies and they have the scroll and they do the drum and I've definitely sat through that and that's really really uh, tiring because it goes on forever because um, it's like four and it's really long and people don't know it so they have to read it um, but at the beginning of this class um, Iris was saying that she had read it in German for the first time um, yesterday and was reflecting, I think at the start of this, saying how negative you found it <laughs> as a interpretation. So two things I noticed is in English, it's just sort of the first part of the cycle, it's just in English, just three sentences. Whereas this whole paragraph is the German version. So it's a lot longer and I think yeah I think it just sounds a bit more negative in general so I don't know do I just should I just give examples or should I just try to translate the whole thing yeah give us some examples so for example the first sentence kind of um, we don't rely on others and we are not a burden for them um, but then there's also, um, I'm trying to translate this, it's like we, we recognize who we are and become strong so that we don't have to ask for help. And then the last sentence is, we are always responsible for ourselves. Yeah, Sagan and the Shinjo sound more like the English thing. Mm. So interesting. I've got this book, What the Buddha Taught, and I've got selections of the Dhammapada. Mm -hmm. Found the two sentences that correspond to our first two sentences. Mm -hmm. And it does appear in the textbook. I think it's the same translation, but mm -hmm. number 160 oneself is one's own protector. What other protector can there be? With oneself fully controlled, one obtains a protection which is hard to gain. Number 165. By oneself indeed e is evil done, and by oneself is one defiled. By oneself is evil left undone, and by oneself indeed is one purified. Purity and impurity depend on oneself. No one can purify another. I've got a slightly different translation here, which is this is the this is a very ancient philosophy book, which was translated. So, it, yeah, there used to be a purple book, and then this book is the philosophy. And the translation for Seku went something like this: Within self, myself finds recourse. Neglect myself, and who to whom could, would could I turn? Self is disciplined from within, the true and hard-earned recourse. In doing evil, I contaminate myself. In not doing evil, I am pure. Purity and impurity comes from within, and others can't purify my heart. Um, 
Yeah, and then there it just talks about which part of the Heart Sutra it comes from. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. I wonder, Iris, whether they've gone to a more Buddhist translation, maybe? Like, rather than coming, you know, I, I, I get the impression from reading all the various translations that are, there are out there that um, the one that we recite remains the one that was felt comfortable at the time. And then I wonder if these guys have gone back to a more sort of Germanic Buddhist translation. My little understanding of, of the travel of Buddhism through that sort of early part of the 19th hundreds uh, was that it was a lot to do with the tra uh, the movement of um, colonialism you know so a lot of Buddhist Sikh and Hindu teachings came into Germany during um, the sort of fight for independence so people who were like fighting for the first world war second world war going I want independence like they they decided to start the side with Germany rather than oh sorry Nazi Germany it was um i think it would have been before that though because there was if you look at the early research into uh indo-european languages and indo-aryan languages specifically sanskrit studies a lot of that was happening in german academic circles in the in, during the time of queen victoria so that's the 1880s but that's what i was trying to say if you look at the um the fight for independence that starts from 1860 upwards what you see is a huge migration out of it not a huge but a, a significant amount of people moving in and out from india to germany certainly my own family have got history of doing that and um um and then and then you've got the sort of scientific foundations of things like the Tata group as well. So yeah, I, I wonder if there's a, I wonder if just... Whether it's taken from German translations of Buddhist texts or that's what I'm, yeah. Japanese. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm wondering. Because maybe they've got, maybe the history of translating is longer. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, what's it look like in Swedish? Uh, so I was just reading through it. I haven't read through the whole thing yet, but it looks, I mean, it feels like the English one, but in Swedish, a bit sort of fancy and just like, just the same feeling you get from the English one, which on one hand you're like, I would never talk like this. But also it doesn't, it doesn't convey a, a neck. I don't think it, feels particularly negative as such. I find it fascinating that we translate it. Like that's a whole power in itself, right? That we translate it to be understood. Um, I, just going back to Iris's point, do we agree that it's... it's yeah, answered? there is emphasis on what not to do and there isn't the equivalent exhortation that appears in English. Mm mentioned maybe a week ago that so we we say the the dokun in english but not in japanese and so maybe we could talk about why that is i think so one of my interpretations and is you want you need to know what you're saying to know what to mean it and this uh, one of the, the reasons that one of the big things about you know, taking for example the Black Lives Matter campaign, it's that's about more than just saying we agree and then doing nothing. It's about saying it, meaning it, and acting, acting accordingly. And I think similarly, if we were to read it out in Japanese, half the time we wouldn't know what we were saying. Most of the time we wouldn't know what we were saying, and we would just for the sake of it be saying these words and they that they mean nothing anymore because we aren't we aren't able to stop and reflect on what it is we're actually saying. Does that make sense? So it's, it's a problem that exists not just with Kempo but with everything that has been imported into the English language. Um, 
It was only in the 1960s, I think, that the Catholic Church said you can hold your masses in the language of your congregants. Before then, it was only in Latin and no one would understand. It's also, I think, what you were saying about about not, if you translate the Quran, you lose some of its meaning. We definitely have, when we translate the Dokun, we get, and I mentioned this in my talk, but you get alternate translations that, that possibly mean they have quite different intonations and different implications depending on how you've translated it. And so then you get the question of the, the translation is based on the translator's interpretation. Um, that class was designed exactly as it was uh, delivered for a reason. And the reason is that uh, I was reading this week about pay, on one page 192 about Zen. And in Zen, it's taught, you can read your own book, right? I don't need to read books to you. Um, it's not bedtime. <coughs> but what it says here is that uh, it talks about how lots of concepts go down the Silk Road and uh, Zen comes from Chan, that probably pronounced incorrectly, but before that comes from the Sanskrit of Dhyana. Yeah? And that caught my imagination because um, being scolded as a kid a lot, a lot, um, the, the phrase that came up a lot was dian kine derio, diando, which is the root of dianos. Has, and it's it, unlike marga, which we were talking about the other day, or marg, uh, which is not a commonly used word except on road names, dian is everywhere, you know, it's a, it's a really, I think of it as quite aggressive, which is, why aren't you thinking? What are you up to? Um, and so that got me thinking about uh, Kempo and Zen and going back to Zen. There's an inc a really good, um, uh, podcast uh, about the history of Zen and where it's coming from and you know I think of Zen and Dhyan as very different concepts as a result of the heritage I have right Dhyan is about study really hard work really hard and you will get somewhere um, it's about the detail of things which is why the end of that class was all about is it this way? My notes say this, which, where's the pressure points? What is, what, do you go right? Do you go left? It was completely designed for us to have a bit of a talking session because I was looking for techniques that cause that between us, right? Is that Dhyan because it's an attention to detail or was it the first half of the class where I gave very little instruction, but we all knew it. So we were all in the flow, right? where your conscious brain was adapting. I could see you, I, could, I was watching you. You were all readjusting. Um, I was readjusting. So if, um, if, if, Ilya always remind, if, I'm always, if I go to Kereyage from um, Kentucky Gary, I always forget to cover. Ophelia never forgets to cover, that's it, I adjust. Okay. Um, I could see some of you would stop, check what we were doing, go back into flow. So the question that the mark that I wanted to raise today for you, discussion point, is it the flow of Zen that is Dhyan and attention or is it that talking thing that we all do in Kempo which is what is the detail and how is this manifest? Any thoughts? I'd say, I definitely think it's more of the previous, in, at least in the way it, it expresses itself in my, it, for me. I think it's because my view is very much the sort of, the kind of, the, the mindful aspect of it, right? The, the actual the thinking while you're doing it. And often, 
personally I don't I don't feel a lot of connection between myself talking and myself thinking I think I, I'll do one or the other and so when I have when I have time to th when I when I reflect on what I'm doing that's often when I'm when I'm personally not talking but I also think that the you wouldn't you wouldn't it's not all one or all the other I think they're both very important aspects of of the Zen of this like mindful sort of train way way that we train and that you sort of you have a moment to reflect we all reflect together and talk about what we need to be doing how how best to get there and then you take a moment and you try and apply that yeah makes sense iris i watched the trailer for Buffy yesterday and i thought it looked quite scary it is quite scary in plot <laughs> 